What is up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Marijuana SA Weekly and today we are not bringing you a guest because we decided that we haven't had enough R&R time with you guys and we haven't been sharing enough of uh, our own knowledge um, and like, I mean, dude, it's been like ages since we've not had a industry professional join us. Maybe, maybe I mean, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah i mean we used to do those cool episodes like where we'd do like a, a report from our grows and like all mm. of these cool solo episodes and uh, then we decided we'd rather do listening and learning but i think we've learned so much over the last period that it's time to revisit some of the things that we might have to have to talk yeah, about like that's the thing it's like it's really cool getting the guests in and and getting a bit of knowledge and insights from uh because i mean to be honest most of the time we get the guests i like i I'm learning as they speaking, you know, it's, 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 it's pushing ourselves past the boundaries of what we already know and like what we, you know, and that makes us better for it. Uh, but it does, it, it takes away a little bit of the ability to do a bit of a discussion around, around some of the things, especially, uh, you know, we, we deal with, we, we speak with you guys on the day to day. Uh, we deal with your guys grows. We help you guys with, uh, your setups, uh, and that's not always easy to convey when we've got like a third party. So long story short, it's, uh, from us to you, uh, Andy and Dean. And today we're going to be talking about how to, or what to consider before starting to grow indoors. So yeah, there's obviously a long list and, uh, I'm going to basically hand over to Dean to, to sort of, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so we're not just indoors we're going to actually be doing what to consider before starting to grow cannabis but obviously with the time of year a 90 percent of you who are listening to this uh, in current time are going to be considering to grow indoors which is mm -hmm. a majority of where our questioning goes into uh with relation to our client base at this time of year i always say to andy that we are in a seasonal business like when you're in the hospitality mm. industry you know that summer is busy and winter is quiet but when you're in the cannabis industry <laughs> uh, summer's busy outdoors and then winter's busy indoors so it's like a two seasons in one year which is uh which is uh why we like to call uh winter the grow light season because that's when mm. everyone wants to cop their first grow light you know so <laughs> it's a nice time I, I thought it would be a cool starting point to come back on as the guest and to chat about a few points which maybe th some of you haven't um thought about before and uh, just sort of start a conversation about sort of the the, it's more of a mental preparation than anything else uh uh these these talking points um so I let's bang guys, straight guys into guys that it. Are, are listening on audible and and uh, spotify and whatnot it is we we have a presentation today so jump onto the youtube go there like and subscribe and you get to watch you get to watch our uh, unfortunately you see our ugly faces but uh you get to see the awesome presentation <laughs> Right. <laughs> awesome at uh, a stretch, but that's uh, yeah, yeah. I mostly present with my words. <laughs> yeah. No, Today I put some it's, visual. It's, it's a legendary <laughs> moment in in the channel to have our our first like internal presentation. I don't, I don't think we've had one. Uh, no, today, I've never so done really one, and it. <laughs> And this I need really to cool. I need to work on it more in the future. But what I will say though, this is my own nug in there as well. Yeah. So <laughs> my own nug, I grew it. So there's legitimacy to this image. <laughs> Hang on. It's frosty. Okay, so uh, there's a few points that I've prepared for today's episode. And, uh, you know, it's uh, like I said, when you're getting into cultivation, you might think it weird to go through a mental exercise as to uh, what to consider. But when you understand the fact that any grow that you're going to get into is a minimum of three, four, up to six months, then it kind of makes sense that you should do some pre-planning before you go and plant. Because once you've planted, you're in for the, for the, for the haul, you know, you're in for a quarter of a year, half of a year. So my favorite first point in this is to decide why you want to grow. Um, you know, there could be multiple reasons. You might be wanting to cultivate for recreation. Uh, so in that point, you'll be like, okay, cool. How much weed do I smoke? And now I want to offset that. So uh, that will help you in your decision making as to sort of how much you want to grow. Or alternatively, you could be looking to make uh, edibles or extracts. So that might mean you want to make, so you might need to cultivate slightly on a larger scale than if you were just sort of going for 
going for flour. And then what a lot of people, uh, we always talk rec, but uh, in my day to day, I deal with a lot of people who are actually wanting to cultivate for medicine. A lot of people have various different ailments. And a lot of the time, the people with the ailments are actually those who need to cultivate the most because when you're going to be if you're going to be turning your product into medicine you know and you're going to be utilizing it as a as a medicine once you're relying on something like cannabis as a medicine it's really something you can't go without so recreation uh maybe turning it into a, a further extract or to create your own medicine those are kinds of the three main points that i deal with when people are when asking people why they want to why they want to grow and i think mm -hmm. it's a really good point because that kind of uh sets the tone for everything else that you're going to be that you're going to be dealing with when you're going to be cultivating cultivating your own uh your own cannabis so that's, uh, the, that's that leads... the first thing they need to that's the first thing they need to ask it's like why am I doing this? You know, like, what's my, what's my end game? This much, this much, X, Y, Z, kilograms, grams, uh, fun, you know, like, you set your goal, basically. Yeah, I mean, and, and some people might even be going into it as a, as a, you know, into the gray area or as a, you know, or into the black market. Uh, we don't know, but it's still a, it's still a, a decision making process that you, that you still need to go through. And that will lead you straight into the next two points, which is where am I going to grow? And is it going to be indoors or is it going to be outdoors? Um, not everyone, I mean, there's, there's certain barriers with relation to getting into indoors, but then again, not everyone has an outdoor environment. And also, depending on the time of the year, you may only be able to grow, you may only be able to grow indoor at that, that time of year. I mean, in South Africa right now, uh, as we film this episode, we're going into our winter season. So like I said at the beginning, you know, most people are now going to be looking for indoor cultivation. A lot of people try and stretch the summer now, you know, uh, do a final plant, but, uh, and you can, and you can really do it successfully, but you're not going to get the same results that you had earlier in the, in the year. So the where I am going to grow is highly important because as I said, this is a long haul process, you know, you're not just, uh, you're not just jumping into this and uh, it's going to be over in a few nights. Growing really is a game of patience, you know, uh, it, it takes a long time for things to happen. I mean, before we filmed now, I was outside looking at some of my outdoor plants and I was just like, yo, when are these going to fatten up? You know, there's still like four weeks to go. It's felt like it's been forever. I've been growing these plants for like six months now, you know, so it really does take a lot of time and it does take a lot of patience. So deciding on the where is highly important because that where is going to be occupied for a long period of time. <laughs> I, I, I just want to add that, I mean, I, I'm pretty confident that you can achieve most of your growing objectives like your why do i want to grow i think both of those can be achieved indoor or outdoors so because like obviously the barriers factored in i think whichever you're considering uh a little bit you might have to time it better um if it's outdoor but other than that i think your objectives you can you can meet either way whichever indoor or outdoor yeah, you can get, uh, I've said it multiple times, I'll say it multiple times more, as long as I'm podcasting, you can, uh, you can grow as good weed indoor or outdoors, it's reliant on other factors, you know, and also, if you have the ability to grow outdoors, it's always where I would push someone first, because you can make your mistakes for, for cheaper. Um, <laughs> then if you're going indoors, and then that kind of leads us straight into our next point which is another point in the decision making process like okay i know that i want to grow either indoor or outdoor but what kinds of costs are involved in growing indoors and what kind of costs are involved in growing outdoors and uh for me or for my experience what i've seen a lot of time is the cost barrier is what's stopping a lot of people from really achieving their indoor goals mm. because it is far 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 more expensive to go indoors than it is to go outdoors i mean for a minimal thousands of rands maybe one or two thousand you could achieve some really really amazing outdoor results but one or two thousand isn't even going to get you a decent grow light indoors you know and then you've still got your tent you've still got your environmentals you've still got uh, whatever else you need to purchase you know uh, hanging kits or uh, hygrometers or ph pens you might need that outdoors too but the costs involved in 
going indoors are far more than they are growing outdoors. So if it's early on and you really think you're going to be making a lot of mistakes or you're not willing to put in massive amounts of resources, then the outdoor might be better for you to start. But if you're willing to make the mistakes, if you've got a bit of extra budget that you've saved up for and you're willing to do your research, then going indoors is also a great option. And what differentiates the two um, besides sort of, you know, if, if, you, if you take away the cost entrance, when you're growing indoors, you can grow indoors year round. Whereas once again, like I said, outdoors, you're limited to, limited to the season. So your why do I want to grow needs to determine, okay, do I need a year round crop or can I achieve what I need to achieve in the outdoor season? Or do I go outdoor first, learn, and then go indoors once I know what I'm doing? And that's what I've seen most people do. Most people will, will wet their teeth in the summer or most new growers. Experienced growers know what they want to do and they're doing it. But most new grow growers are going to do an, an outdoor harvest, get either terrible results and probably give up the hobby, <laughs> or, they're going to, or they're going to get some decent results. And then with that, they're going to save throughout the summer period. They're going to go indoors for their first indoor season. And then by the time the new summer comes, they've got like two seasons of experience under them. And now they've got an indoor cultivation space. And then they're going into another outdoor outdoor grow so it it's really does same, and it's I mean, the same plant as well it's like you know if you can learn it if you can grow it outdoors you can i mean the plant's going to grow the same indoors you just have to tweak a few few factors uh but it's you know it's the, the plant's going to go through its same cycle the same things you, you know you're going to ma manage ph the same it's, there's a lot of similarities but without that like massive cost burden yeah i mean the the technique and the way that the plant gr grows and the understandings you gain from either indoors or outdoors is going to it's going to be exactly the same mm -hmm. but they're like andy said there's you know an escom bill you have to pay this overheads from a, a multi-thousand rand indoor grow system that you need to worry about so the stress levels of going indoors especially for a first-time grower are far higher because of the investment you know and it, it is really an investment because you're buying equipment that's going to yield you something that you would otherwise spend money on but it is a large investment and that does need to be considered heavily before you go and jump into purchasing an indoor grow system because there are a lot of efforts that go into cultivating uh, you know it's not just plug and play it's called weed it's easy to grow bad weed but it's hard to grow good weed so <laughs> you need to uh, you need you need to just consider those points a little bit as well i also want to add the after like just side note the aftermarket for for growing equipment is bad like it's not uh, uh people don't want to buy second hand grow equipment i don't know why it's just as good as the as first hand but i think with leds you just don't know about the life cycle and already the, they're just so so cheap in the market compared to what they were like people buying them now for say 10 grand they're not going to be 10 grand in three years time they're going to be retailing for five or six so like your aftermarket yeah. value on that's going to be half that it's just what happens with the, the ever-growing tech hps units are so dirt cheap these days you're never going to sell it what you paid for like a, a, a now you've been it yeah, and the tents, yeah. <laughs> it's just so inconvenient and the possible like pest uh transfers and mildews and sanitary things i don't know it's just a um by all means i love a second hand uh, deal but uh it's not notoriously good in the in the yeah i think space. any second i think any second hand connoisseur knows the high that there's high high risk involved you could <laughs> buy it today and it's broken tomorrow yeah. you know so so like was the cost saving there and also i mean it, it, you can do it successfully i love buying the yeah. thing second hand but i've <laughs> had a right. lot of things break on me a day later you know <laughs> especially with electronics so <laughs> I, I really like that point as well um and then uh, just on to my next point uh which is uh something that i don't think a lot of people do really consider and that is uh is security going to be an issue now in the past we would have been worrying about mm. well, i mean we're still worrying about the cops stop the cops they're still arresting people for small for small growers but uh, it's, it's less of a worry than what it used to be but that's just one side of the of, of the coin on the other side, you have to also remember that you're cultivating something that is of high value. You know, mm. a kilogram of high quality outdoor that you've got on a tree in your garden is worth a lot of money. 
you know so if it's in plain sight open to the road and you're having people constantly walking past and looking at your tree there's a chance that by the time it comes to harvest maybe a week before you think you're going to harvest you'll come out there one morning and all of a sudden your tree's gone and i it's actually happened to to uh some people that i know you know that their, their plants have been stolen so security is <laughs> <laughs> yo grow your own man <laughs> But security is is really an issue when you're or an issue to consider. You know, that's if you're growing outdoors, if you're growing indoors. Now you've got expensive grow lights, expensive technology. Maybe you've got like a camera in there. So you've got like a lot of high value stuff besides the plants that are just being grown, that are just growing. So I'm not saying don't go and uh, document your grows or don't go and, uh, you know, share them on your grow page on Instagram. But uh Keep certain things secret, you know, only allow people who you trust fully to come into your grow space and allow mm. as little people as possible to come into your grow space. I mean, if we reference Mike's uh, episode from from uh, uh, when we were, talked about the pests, he was saying, you know, I think he said it about three times, like, yeah, it's probably your mate who comes in who's going to bring that spider mm. mite, you know, that's attached to his clothes. So, <laughs> like, uh, allow few people in and also keep the location of your grower secret. Share it on, share your plant pictures and stuff like that, but don't share, you know, where it is and, and, and exactly what you're up to because you're opening yourself okay. to a security risk. You've got high value crop, you've got high value plants, you're maybe keeping documentation of your grow, someone might be watching. So, you know, keep the private things private because security is an issue. It's an issue with the police coming to confiscate your goods. And it's also an issue with nefarious people who might want to come and uh, take your crop or take your equipment for themselves. And I mean, we're in South Africa as well. So I'll just say that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not something that often pops to someone's mind first. You know, it's such an exciting thing to do. I'm going to grow my own weed. I'm going to grow my own tank. I'm going to have the best weed of all my friends when they come to my house. Like a, we're going to get super high. Like a, and then, a garden greenhouse like that's visible from the road. You know, it's like, I'm going to grow here and it's going to be fine. It's like, oof. <laughs> yeah and i mean it's just maybe you've got supplementary lighting in your greenhouse okay mm. now all of a sudden at eight o'clock at night when it's dark you've got this beautiful shining gold greenhouse with these green plants <laughs> in it everyone's gonna know what's going in there and you might not be scared of the law but you you like because you're doing nothing wrong but you could be opening yourself to equipment theft or plant theft or you know just things that you don't want to get involved in so uh it is uh, it's a big point in in this uh, presentation and it is something that i want people to consider because as things open up more we want to start marketing ourselves as growers or people who know what they're talking about you know but just be careful in the way in what you share um it's like uh it's like a new parents and, and then you see those like uh, instagrams like what to share about your kid like these are our kids so like what do we share about it only the you know stuff that you are comfortable sharing because you don't want to open yourself up to to negative uh negative entities mm -hmm. 100 percent okay the and then Cost. investment uh, uh, should be the last, the last point is uh, sort of uh, what are my ideal growing, uh, growing conditions and uh, where can I get the information uh, on all of these points as to the cultivation. So uh, <clears throat> ideal growing conditions are, are outdoor. You're looking for somewhere that you is protected and that you have a good, a good amount of sun. And then indoors is obviously certain parameters uh, that you would uh, maintain uh, throughout your throughout your indoor growing cycle and that's what gives you the control and you can get all of that information on the internet a lot of us have learned to grow via the internet via forums uh, uh, in the past it was forums because no one wanted to everyone was lang scared uh, it's the forums are still a great place um, we've done some really uh, some we, we've done some uh, uh, an episode on grow diaries which i think is a really really good platform to learn and then uh, obviously you can get your information from us <laughs> we operate a full-time grow shop we help people grow so you could get your information from us as well uh, there's various other entities in south africa that are also doing grow learning um and uh different grow shops that are going to be able to assist you but uh the problem is there's a lot of information out there so 
uh, the fundamentals remain the same. And if you can sort of wilter through a lot of the BS, you will start to realize that the fundamentals remain the same. But you do need to educate yourself. Uh, it's not something you can just get into and think you're going to be pro overnight. Um, even for someone like myself who has lots of grow experience, you know, I'm constantly dealing with issues. I'm constantly going to Google. I'm constantly searching for, 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 uh, for, uh, to, to try and solve my issues. I mean, you know, you, 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 as soon as you think you're getting good, something will come and slap you and uh, you're going to have to go back to sort of step one and, and, uh, and start again. So like the education and the education of yourself is one of the main things, you know, you can't, expect to get into this and expect other people to do it for you it's something that you need to upskill yourself on and if you understand that and if you're willing to really consider hard what you're getting yourself into it can be very rewarding and fun but if you don't want to educate yourself and you're not going to put in the effort it can be a massive disappointment so from my experience i've seen it a lot i've seen the people who are willing to put in the effort and i've seen them really achieve good results and I've seen some people who didn't want to put in the effort <laughs> and they gave up the hobby and went back to buying on the street. So, yeah. you know, what do you do? You want to have control over your own product? Do you want to have an endless supply of weed that you never run out? It's achievable, but uh, I would consider all of these points before you jump into jump into it. So to summarize, OK, so why do you want to grow? Figure it out uh, where you're going to grow indoors, outdoors. Uh, and then like in conjunction with that, like how secure is that space? You know, have you thought about like eyes, parrying eyes and things, you know, where wandering souls into your property? Uh, a lot of you guys are on farms, perhaps. And that's maybe got a double ended source. So there's like people there that, you know, uh, that could. Uh, you know, walking around, it's, it's like a tiny, like gated in space, it's like a big open piece of land, a lot of people uh, coming across. But if you're in like a small apartment, there's windows, streetcars. So you need to factor in those. Uh, and then obviously, the investment and where you're going to find your knowledge. Uh, all good points. I have almost nothing to add to it. Uh, it's, it's, I would agree. Uh, I would just maybe motivate anyone that's thinking about it to give it a go. Reach out to us, chat to us if you want a little bit of a, a nudge in the right direction so that we can um, get you get you started or just give you some a bit of advice. And that's pretty much it from us today. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe. Your likes and subscribes basically keep this channel going via, <laughs> via the motivation. It's, uh, uh, it's not easy these days to grow in the cannabis space and we don't get paid from YouTube. We don't take sponsors. This is just to support our own, our own business and to support our own, uh, community of growers. So if you guys are out there, like, and subscribe, share it with your friends, helps us a load and until next week. Peace. Peace guys.